Harbour at the Star of the North Retreat Centre in St. Albert near Edmonton. And we're here for the creation of the new Franciscan province of Canada. It's the Holy Spirit province of Canada. This was created this very morning by the union of the St. Joseph's province of Eastern Canada and Christ the King province of Western Canada. This morning, the, our Minister General is present. We have our General uh, Definitor from Rome and we suppressed both existing provinces, St. Joseph in the East, Christ the King in the West. We suppressed them and immediately created this new Holy Spirit province of Canada through a decree. I, I was, I'm the outgoing Minister Provincial of uh, the St. Joseph Province of the East and Bob Mokri, Friar Bob Mokri, uh, is the outgoing Provincial of the Christ the King Province. Both of us are present here at this chapter, as most of our friars are. And this morning we both gave the seals of our, of our provinces to the Minister General. So by this symbolic gesture, we were ending, we were, uh, in fact, we were le leaving office officially. And the Minister General announced the new government that has been chosen to govern the new Holy Spirit province. And I was chosen as a Minister Provincial. Now uh, I, I'll be working as a team. Father Bob is the Vicar Provincial and we've named four definitors, two from the East, two from the West. So this group of six people were asked to, to be the leadership of the Holy Spirit province. It began maybe 10 years ago because the provinces, the two provinces, the former province of St. Joseph, uh, primarily French speaking in the eastern part of the country, and the province of Christ the King in the western part of the country, primarily English speaking, already began to collaborate in different projects, um, trying to help strengthen areas where they were weak. Where they were mutually weak, they tried to become mutually strong. Before getting to a point where they had not enough strength, enough energy to be able to address the current issues and try to come up with some more creative ideas going toward the future, they decided that they, they might be best to, to work even more closely together. And so that's when the, the general order became involved, the courier became involved, I became involved personally, and that's, the, that's what led up to this, this unification. It's all about strengthening, it's all about the future, it's not about dying or, or going away, it really is about becoming stronger. Of course, one of the reasons we're uniting, uh, you can imagine there are a few of us. We're less than 100 friars on a huge Canadian territory. One of the reasons we're uniting is to, um, to avoid duplicating, whether it be government of the province. Instead of having two structures, we will have one for formation for different areas. But I would say the, the main objective here is to be more efficient in evangelization and to renew our life as friars. In creating a new entity, we're starting anew. So this will mean, I hope, going back to the basics of who we are as friars. And who we are is men inspired by the gospel. 800 years ago, Francis left everything. He left a world of privileges, of riches, to simply live the gospel. My wish is that each of the members recognize that they are the successors of St. Francis. All of us are. Anyone who identifies with Francis of Assisi, just like anyone who identifies with Jesus, is a disciple, as Jesus was a disciple. So we're co-disciples. We're all sharing the same responsibilities. We're all sharing the same richness. And I think try to, to convince, for all of us to be convinced that this is true about our lives, that all of us bear the, the great opportunity but also the great challenge to be signs of hope, be signs of love, be signs of God and God's love in this world today. That's what else could we I, I don't there's no other message I could ask anyone than that. So this concern the Archdiocese of Edmonton have been here for more than a hundred years, about 110 really. And I would have to say over that time their their impact on the life of this local church has really been remarkable has been deeply felt by the people here and deeply appreciated. So they came and they established a parish, they established a school, they established a college. Uh, as Franciscans, all right, they would have done countless acts of charitable outreach to the poor and to the needy. They've had a strong presence at our own Newman Theological College here since its foundation. So the 
ministry that the Franciscans have exercised here in the Archdiocese is varied. It's, it's wonderful to see not just the good works that they've done, but how in the middle of the Archdiocese, they really have been a sign of that, an effective sign of that Franciscan charism of care for the needy and care for the poor, of the, of the priority of poverty, really in the life of, the, of, of any Christian. We need to find a way in which we embrace our own existential poverty uh, in our relationship with God and in our relationships with others. They remind us of that. And the people have really responded in, in great love and support over these many, many years. This is what we want to do. So we want to be close to people. We want to be particularly close to the poorest, to migrants, to people who are uh, experiencing difficulties of all sorts. There are few of us. We're going to be forming fraternity and hopefully uh, we're going to be 11 in the bread of Canadian society. I'm very hopeful. Our name, Holy Spirit, says it all. We want to be inspired by the Spirit. We hope to be creative and evangelizing. And as you can see, this group of men is full of hope.